Good morning, everybody. It's a wonderful Wednesday. Um, hope you guys are doing good today. And sorry about that, phone was going off. Um, we're continuing with Butterfly Week, and today I have another nonfiction text for you guys. This one is called From Caterpillar to Butterfly, Following the Life Cycle. Um, it's written by Suzanne Slade and illustrated by Jeff Yesh. And you'll notice that it is illustrations, drawings, and not photographs, um, as in when we, um, as when we read a butterfly called Hope. Um, one thing I do want to say to you guys before I forget is that all three of the books from this week so far, A Butterfly Called Hope, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and this one, From Caterpillar to Butterfly, are RP books. You see the sticker on the, the dot on the side. So um, because you're able to take those RP quizzes now from home, uh, that you would be able to quiz on any of these three books. Um, I'm not sure about some of the previous ones that I have read uh, because I didn't check, um, but you don't want to go back too far and still be able to go, do well on your quiz. But this week, yes, we're good on RP. So if you want to take a quiz, go right ahead. All right, let's go ahead and continue with the butterfly life cycle. All right, because this one is nonfiction, you'll notice we've got the table of contents set up in here um, and the page numbers for the different sections that we're going to read about. Um, we can see here that it's gonna, be, our introduction is sort of the colorful flyers um, and then we're going to get into the different um, stages in that life cycle, the eggs, the larva, the pupa, um, and then the butterfly taking flight. And we'll go into more depth on each one of those. All right, colorful flyers. Butterflies fill our sky with beauty. Some butterflies are large, others are small. These insects have colorful wings that may have stripes or spots. There are at least 15,000 different kinds of butterflies in the world. That's a lot of butterflies. That's one fact that um, I learned today when I was rereading, pre-reading this. All butterflies go through the same stages or steps in their life cycles. Let's follow the life cycle of the monarch butterfly. And the monarch, as you know um, from our hope story, is the black and orange one. The Amazing Monarch. The monarch butterfly is a strong flyer. It can stay in flight for a long time without resting. Some monarchs can easily soar thousands of miles during a lifetime. A monarch does not start out with its powerful wings. Like all butterflies, a monarch goes through many changes before coming an adult butterfly. Our little fun fact down here, it says some monarchs travel as far as 2,000 miles, which is 3,200 kilometers, to reach a warmer area during winter. We call that migration. Uh, much like, like bears hibernate during the winter time when it gets cold the, um, and birds migrate to find warmer places, the butterflies migrate as well. So if you have a butterfly that typically lives up north where it gets um, cold during the winter time and snow, it will fly south like to Mexico or to South America, Central America uh, to find a warmer place for the winter. In the beginning, butterflies go through four stages during their lives. These stages are egg, larva, pupa, and adult. A monarch butterfly begins its life as a tiny egg. This is the first stage in its life cycle. So here we start right here with the egg under the leaf. And then we can see the stages here. We're gonna go to the larva stage, which is the caterpillar, the pupa stage, which is also um, where we get our um, cocoon or chrysalis. And then to the adult butterfly, who continues the cycle again. The word metamorphosis, say that with me, metamorphosis, means change. 
butterflies go through complete metamorphosis because they change a great deal during their life cycles. Some insects, like grasshoppers, do not change as much. Their metamorphosis is called incomplete. So because the butterfly goes from an egg to a caterpillar to a completely new um, insect, that would be the complete change or complete metamorphosis. All right, so now we're gonna take each one of those steps and talk about them individually, starting with the tiny eggs. A female monarch lays her egg on a milkweed plant. She usually sticks her egg to the underside of a milkweed leaf. Now I'm guessing that's to protect it. The book doesn't tell me that for sure, but I'm thinking that by going underneath, it's not as obvious to other insects or birds that might be flying around, and so that protects the egg. Soon, a tiny insect begins to grow inside of the egg. You can see that right there. There's the beginning of the caterpillar. Like most butterflies, monarchs lay one egg at a time. An egg is less than 1 25th of an inch wide. That's about the size of a pinhead. And I brought my ruler out here. If you could take that inch right here from the end of my fingernail to the end of the ruler, and you chop that inch up into 25 separate little parts, one of those parts would be the size of a um, caterpillar egg. Very small, at least to start. All right, so now stage two, the larva. Depending on the temperature, a larva hatches from a monarch egg in four to six days. So the egg's not there for very long. The larva is also called a caterpillar. It eats the soft shell of its egg, and then it begins to munch on the milkweed leaves. A caterpillar grows for at least two weeks. If the temperature is low, the caterpillar may take longer to grow. So warmer temperatures, they grow faster. Cooler temperatures, they grow slower. And I've read somewhere else that the caterpillar eats the um, egg at first because that's the first thing, thing he sees when he gets um, out of the egg and he's very hungry. So he eats that first before going to find the leaves. Our extra fact here. Um, when the caterpillar grows, it sheds its tight skin. First, the caterpillar attaches one of its ends to a milkweed leaf or vine. Next, the caterpillar's outer skin breaks open and the pupa begins to come out. So you can see the shedded skin right here um, and the caterpillar is kind of crawling away from it. It basically, because of um, how much it eats, it outgrows that's that outer skin a lot like you guys do when you outgrow your clothes as kids they get to be too tight too small and so you get newer bigger ones well it does the same thing for its skin a couple times all right our next stage here is the pupa stage a monarch caterpillar sheds its skin four times after shedding its skin the fifth time the caterpillar becomes a pupa. So this I think is basically the adult caterpillar. The pupa covers itself with a liquid that turns into a hard shell. The shell is called a chrysalis. Inside the chrysalis, wonderful changes take place. So after that fifth shedding, we have the caterpillar that attaches itself underneath the, le the leaf and then it starts to cover itself with that liquid that eventually wraps completely around it and hardens. Once inside the chrysalis, a pupa turns into liquid. Only its organs remain. This liquid forms the butterfly's new parts, such as the body, the legs, and the wings. That's where the magic happens. Now, our final stage is the butterfly stage, so taking flight. In about two weeks, the hard chrysalis begins to open. And if you remember when we read a butterfly called Hope, 
the outer at, outer part of the chrysalis starts to become clear and so you can see the wings inside. A new butterfly comes out of its shell. Then the butterfly unfolds wet wrinkled wings. It waits for them to dry. So they can't fly at first because they're very wet, but in a short amount of time they dry out and they're able to fly. The butterfly has a proboscis or long tube. It will use the, the proboscis for feeding. That's this right here. The proboscis is in two pieces. The butterfly must fix the two pieces together before it is ready to fly. After about an hour, the beautiful butterfly flutters into the sky. The proboscis is located on the butterfly's head. After landing on a flower, the butterfly unrolls the proboscis it uses this like a straw, sipping nectar from the flowers. Seeing the world. The monarch begins a new and exciting life as a butterfly. It no longer spends all of its time on a milkweed plant. Instead of munching on leaves, a butterfly flies from flower to flower. It drinks a sweet liquid called nectar. The nectar is found inside of the flowers. So we get a, a good view of that. You can see the butterfly lands on the flower. There's that little straw going down into the center of it so that it can drink the nectar. Monarch butterflies cannot survive in cold places. North American monarchs fly south to find warm weather before the cold winter arrives. Some kinds of butterflies hibernate or sleep for the entire winter. Others die because of the low temperatures. So as we said earlier, yes, they fly or migrate south. The cycle continues. Monarch butterflies that come out of their chrysalis during the months from December through August live for only about a month. That's because some of those months are pretty cold. Those that come out in late summer or fall, when it's warmer, can live for eight to nine months. During this short time, a monarch searches for a mating partner. A male monarch often gives off a special smell to get a female's attention. After mating, the female finds a safe place to lay her egg. This tiny egg begins a brand new life cycle Soon, another beautiful monarch butterfly will take to the sky. Depending on the type of butterfly, a life cycle may be short or long. For example, a short life cycle is about eight weeks long. A longer life cycle may be more than six months. The longest life cycle for a butterfly is about 18 months, which is a year and a half. And then the cycle continues. Here we can see all on one page. So we have the egg, which only has to be there for four to six days before the larva emerges. Um, it's around for about 14 to 21 days, so two to three weeks. And then it's during that time is when it's shedding its skin. And then it, after the fifth shedding, it becomes a pupa and forms its chrysalis. And then, um, five to 15 days from there, we get the butterfly. The butterfly will live anywhere from one to nine months. And during that time, it continues the cycle. All right, I got a couple of fun facts that I'm gonna read to you guys. I'm just gonna turn this and let it face me. Um, one of them was, it's kind of, the first one actually is kind of funny. It says an adult caterpillar weighs about 2,700 times more than it did at birth. So from the time it's born till it becomes, it, it makes that chrysalis, it's increased its side by, size by 2,700 times. Now, to put that into perspective, if you weighed eight pounds at birth, which is a typical baby, and grew as fast as a caterpillar, you would end up weighing as much as a gray whale. That's big, huh? Big changes. Um, I just thought that was a good way to, to put it into perspective. 
Um, let's see, a monarch butterfly's wingspan is about four inches. I'm gonna get my ruler out again. So here about four inches is about from tip to tip how big a monarch is. The North American Western Pygmy blue wingspan is the, one of the smallest and it's around a half an inch. So I'm gonna go all the way down here. This one from tip to tip from its wing is only about a half an inch long. Now on the opposite end, the Queen Alexandra's uh, Alexandra bird wing is the largest butterfly. Its huge wings measure about 11 inches across, which goes from here all the way to here. So that's a big butterfly. Imagine seeing one of those fly by you. Very interesting. All right, one last thing. Um, it says some milkweed plants contain toxins. Remember, the milkweed is what the butterfly eats. Um, and toxins are the same as poison. So after eating the toxins, it doesn't hurt the butterfly, but it makes the monarch butterfly taste bad and will be poisonous to any other um, animals that might want to eat it. So that's how it protects itself by tasting bad and being poisonous to others. The other animals, insects realize, oh, I don't want to eat that. That's kind of gross and nasty and it could make me feel bad. So they leave the monarchs alone. So that is their protection. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so this is what I'm gonna show you guys today. That's why I got it um, set up here in front of my computer. Um, we're gonna take a look at a new website that I found in the back of this book called facthound.com. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps where you can find some fun stuff um, about butterflies. All right, so we're gonna focus in here on the computer. You just wanna open up a tab and go up into the, uh, the search bar and type in fact, oh, did I spell it correctly? Hound.com and hit enter. All right, from there you can see this particular page. You want to, it asks you what grade you're in. So since most of you guys are kindergarten through fourth grade, I'm gonna choose that box for the grade. All right, and then here you can see that there's all kinds of different things that are um, on this website. So you might want to come back and look for something else that interests you or that goes along with what you've been studying. But for today, we're going to go to animals. So I'm going to click on the first one. And um, I noticed down here we got rabbits for last week. That would have been helpful. But we're going to go up here to insects and spiders. And then from this page, I want the children's butterfly site. It's in orange. All right, and then on this, then you've got lots of different options. Uh, we've got some pictures here, but uh, here's your, your links here where you see all the little butterflies. You can access some coloring pages. If you want, if you have a printer at home, you can color the different phases of the butterfly that we just talked about. Let me go back. Um, there is a page here of some frequently asked questions. You can do this as sort of like a quiz for yourself. Uh, what are butterflies or moths? Or how many different kinds of butterflies and moths exist? Are butterflies poisonous? So try to think of what your answer is. Let's go to the poisonous one since we just talked about that. Um, are butterflies poisonous? So we said yes, so click on it, and then it'll bring you to a page where the answer is, and it'll say some butterflies, such as the monarch, eat poisonous plants, and so that makes them poisonous. So you can, and you can find out about which other ones are um, poisonous as well. So you can quiz yourself on that page and then get the an answer immediately. Go back again. Um, Learn about the life cycle of the butterfly and the moth, which we, we've already talked about. There's some additional links if you want to find some other links about them. And then this last one that I'm going to show you is some photographs. So if you want to see other types of butterflies, you can um, see a whole page and look at the different butterflies here. All right, so I just found something else that might be interesting that you guys can play around with. Um, I will post the name of this site uh, when I post the, the link for this. 
and that way you can look into that and ex have fun exploring about some butterflies. All right, have a good day. Bye.